The good lady from the 25th, Representative Stambaugh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support today of House Resolution 4613. And on this day of remembrance, I stand to honor our Japanese American citizens and the great sacrifice that they made during a very dark time in our nation's history. It was just over four months after the Pearl Harbor attacks that the relocation notices were placed around our nation, around our state, our communities, our cities, and our neighborhoods. Our Pacific Northwest was impacted greatly as our Japanese American families were uprooted, their businesses and their farms were, were evacuated and had to be, um, but left to be tended by neighbors. Students' educations were disrupted and the freedoms that they had in America were revoked. It was all in the perception of a lack of loyalty, denied to them the opportunity to live, work, and be free in the community that they called home. It only took one sixteenth of Japanese ancestry to be eligible to be interned. Within two weeks of the public notice, families were forced to decide what they were going to bring with them, what could they carry on their own backs and bring to them, uh, with them, um, and immediately locate to assembly centers like that of the Puyallup Assembly Center located in the 25th District at the Puyallup Fairgrounds. It is with dignity and devotion that these Northwest Japanese Americans followed those directions. The grounds of the Puyallup Fair were transformed into makeshift, uh, a makeshift camp where they housed nearly 8,000 Japanese Americans. As re I read letters from those that were interned in Camp Harmony, which is what they um, used to refer to the Puyallup Assembly Center. It shared about the horror of those interned as they looked and noticed that they were constantly being watched by those in guard towers, that they were surrounded constantly by barbed wire and men um, holding um, um, uh, guns and, and threatening the value that they found that was knitted into the American, um, the American society. So Madam Speaker, I ask if I can share a quote from the Seattle office of the American Friends Service Committee. Please proceed. This is written by Joseph Conard, and it's dated April 2nd, 1942. He says, at the Puyallup Fairgrounds, 40 miles from Seattle, 15 miles from Tacoma, all was a madhouse of swarming carpenters. Box-like buildings were being thrown together on a large field that was formerly the fair parking lot. Each room is about 20 feet square and a house for an entire Japanese family. Joseph says, you can imagine how our hearts sank. Army barracks are palaces by comparison. The Japanese people aren't animals, they are middle-class farmers and business people, refined, moral, and self-reliant. To take these charming, cultured, college-bred young men and women and their mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and herd them together in these boxes in Puyallup, it is a disgrace. I believe it's true that when Japanese American citizens or citizens uh, even today in our country, when their mothers or fathers or grandparents or children, when their freedoms are stripped, in the case in 1942, they were given a five-digit number. Their rights were removed, and indeed, we should echo the sentiments of Joseph. Our hearts should sink. As we reflect on the hardship placed on the Japanese-American citizens, let us be thankful for the access we have to Japanese-American history, even here in this room. The University of Washington Library has the Japanese American Exhibit and Access Project, where they've compiled newspaper articles, letters, photos, and internal newsletters from Camp Harmony. It documented the four months that people were interned at the Puyallup Fairgrounds. Families, in turn, tried to continue their lives on a normal basis as, as much as they could. Reading through these newsletters, I found announcements of uh, new babies being born, uh, even uh, those sharing, please come to my barrack listing the address and share an idea for a name you have for my newborn baby. They announced marriages and even had a honeymoon sweet barrack. And they also had um, 
uh, obituaries in the newsletters and ceremony announcements for those whose last days were spent in Camp Harmony. The passion for education, for business, for self-governance and freedom is the very energy that kept those interned moving and also led thousands of men to volunteer to fight for our country's freedom in World War II. The strength and honor of the Japanese Americans and our nation is clear to see. In speaking with Elsie Taniguchi from the Puyallup chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, I learned that she was um, interned at Camp Harmony along with three generations of her family. They had no idea how long they would be at Camp Harmony. When she entered, she was in kindergarten, and by the time she returned to her home farm in Fife, she was entering the fourth grade. It is estimated that nationally more than 120,000 Japanese Americans were interned across the nation, and nearly half of those were children. The desire of these children was pure of heart. In reading the letters from the um, University of Washington's uh, Camp Harmony exhibit, students wrote to their former classes in Seattle, um, sharing with them what camp, life at the camp was like, sharing about the studies and, and the, their peers that they missed and their teachers that they missed. Of all the pen pal letters that I read, the most moving salutation was written by a child and it simply stated at the end, I am an American. We are thankful in Pierce County to be the home of the Camp Harmony Committee. This is an organization that is dedicated to the preservation of the memory of Camp Harmony and those that were impacted. The committee is a cross-discipline of museum curators, historians, of Japanese American citizens, and community members. The organization works to educate young people and recently held a presentation at Puyallup High School where they had five chairs um, on stage to symbolize the five Japanese American students who were interned at Camp Harmony when they were in their senior year at Puyallup High School. Um, in, in talking with some of the members of the committee, um, I, they shared that this presentation at Puyallup High School um, had five students. However, in 1942, if you had mimicked that same presentation at Fife High School, also in the 25th district, half of the student body would have been interned at Camp Harmony. This organization offers an opportunity to reflect, to educate, and to appreciate the dignity, the strength, and the courage that is interwoven into the fabric of our community, our state, and our nation. It is with great appreciation for the strength of these families and those that endure these horrific times. It's in looking back that we're able to recognize the contrast of those days and make the conscious decision today to speak, to act, to legislate in truth, in love, and in honoring of freedom. We see people for being people, not simply a number. We acknowledge our differences. We celebrate our uniqueness. We find strength in our similarities. And we are to look to people eye to eye and heart to heart. I urge support for this House Resolution 4613. Thank you.